Okay, so hello, my name is Christina and I work at Garvin. I'm the endocrine nurse and doing all the simulation tests and patient education for injection, self-injection. Let's talk about adrenal glands first. So ad adrenal glands are sitting on the top of the kidney, producing very important hormones, mucocorticoids, mineral corticoids, and androgens. So these are the hormones that regulate blood pressure, sodium retention, fluid volume, and immune system. So we also call them, you know, the sugar, salt, and sex. So adrenal insufficiency. So adrenal insufficiency is the inability of the adrenal glands to produce cortisol, which is a very important hormone essential for life. It can be primary for patients with Addison's disease when the adrenal glands are not able to produce the hormone due to impairment. And also there is secondary adrenal insufficiency, which is a hypothalamic and pituitary disorder. So people with Addison's, they require lifelong glucocorticoid and neurocorticoid replacement therapy. People with secondary, they require only glucocorticoid replacement. So it's very important that the glucocorticoid doses, they need to increase their dose during physical stress, psychological, or ma major illness. So let's talk about glucocorticoids. These are the steroid hormones called cortisol. They also, the hormones for the fight or flight, called the stress hormone, regulates, as we talked about, the blood glucose levels, blood pressure, and immune system. They are produced in a circadian manner, so they are peaking around like eight, nine o'clock in the morning, and during several times during the day, and the lowest at bedtime. So we also can call it like the get out of bed hormone. The cortisol levels are rise in response to stress. You know, like give the energy to run away. <laughs> Glucocorticoid replacement. So I just would like to talk about the different tablet medication that we have and the equivalent dose. Most of the patients, you know, I meet, they are on hydrocortisone or high zone. So the so 20 milligram uh, of a hydrocortisone is, you can see in that it's equivalent, you know, like for cortate for 25. Prednisone, 5 milligram, or the dexamethasone, 0 0.5. I just would like to show you with this slide that cortisol production in a circadian rhythm. During midnight, so we have a very, very low level of cortisol. And as you know, we are going to 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and getting out of bed. We have a surge of the hormone and also a little bit lower, but peak several times during the day. And again, at bedtime, it is getting less and less. How many of you had short synaptin tests after surgery or two? Yeah, so you remember that. So what we are trying to establish to see the cortisol response. You know, after putting the cannula in and taking your baseline bloods, I usually give a synaptin injection, which is not very pleasant. And then we measure the response 30 minutes and against 30 minutes time. And we are aiming for the magic number is 420. So that shows a normal response, the red line and the green line with people with Addison's disease that they have no cortisol response at all. So what is ad adrenal crisis? So it is a life-threatening emergency that needs Im immediate medical attention and the administration of hydrocortisone injection. Gastroenteritis with vomiting, diarrhea, or other infections are the main triggers for an adrenal crisis, but also stressful events and illness can precipitate it. It's very important that patients and families receive adequate education to follow sick day rules, to adjust medication appropriately during illness and major stress, and this education should be tailored to each patient and family's individual needs. So symptoms of adrenal crisis, severe dehydration, pale, cold, clammy skin, sweating, rapid shallow breathing, can be dizziness, severe vomiting, diarrhea, muscle weakness, headache, severe drowsiness, and loss of, loss of consciousness at the end. So this is what we would like to prevent. So adrenal insufficiency. So it's very important to, to keep safe. How can we do that? Medical ID. Patients with adrenal insufficiency should wear a medical bracelet or necklace that stays, you know, on steroid dependent 
or adrenal insufficiency. So when you are found maybe in a car accident and you're unconscious, medical team right away, they know what they should do. Otherwise, you know, if you don't have an ID on you, you don't carry, you're unconscious. First of all, it is the most important thing for you guys to have a hydrocortisone injection to help your body to deal with the stress. Also carry a steroid card or emergency and you know, insufficiency card with you all the time. So I, when I do my teaching, and I don't forget, so I have this little medical alert card made by the previous nurse, nurse who worked at Garvin, and it says, you know, it can be put in your wallet, and it tells, you know, like the instructions what to do, and that it says, you know, the steroid dependent. Always, always have enough supplies of the hydrocortisone or prednisone tablet. I had patients who come in for a short selecting test and telling me that they haven't taken their medication before the test, which is good, but they haven't taken like two sprays prior because they have run out of their medication. It's important, do not run out of your medication, it's important. Sick day rules and sick day management, it's very important, very important to know how to increase the doses and for how long and what to do. Travel letter, so your endocrinologist GP can give you a travel letter, you know, when you travel overseas and you have to show the airline that you are carrying needles with you and syringes. And also it can contain very inform uh, important information about your uh, disease and management, you know, if you have to go to hospital overseas. Emergency injection, I just can't, you know, emphasize that being prepared, how important it is. So these are just some uh, examples of medical alert bracelets. So it says, you know, it's absolutely essential to wear it and with the information of the diagnosis and treatment. There are fancy ones. If you look at the online uh, ordering system, you can buy one with, you know, crystals or gold or, or just silver. You can pick, you know, what you like the most, but these little plastic ones are also very good. So also this is the uh, medical alert ID card. There's a little note, you know, like what to do and how to increase the dose during illness and it states, you know, it's very dependent, the patient. And this one I found it on the website of the Pituitary Foundation of UK and this is what they have for their patient. So very important to tell your family and friends what they may need to do for you in an emergency. You can even tell them, you know, like the signs and symptoms of, you know, they have to look out because when you are going down that pathway, sometimes, you know, thinking is hard, you know, you're just not feeling good, not feeling good, but family won't know why and what to do right away. Keep extra supply of medication and emergency injection, which is very easily accessible place. So you don't have to look for it, it's always with you. I give out all these little kits and put some goodies in the injection syringes and just keep it in your bag. Never leave it in the car in the heat, but you know, just carrying with you on the, the door, right? Keep needles and syringes with your emergency kit. Keep instructions on how to give the injection in the kit. So I also, when I fill up this little kit, I have this little, just a reminder because I go through the injection teaching it just step by step. You can show family. And I have some, so if you need, I have a couple, not a couple, I have a lot to give out. <laughs> and also you can download from the Pfizer, the Pfizer app from the uh, application store. So you can see those uh, QR codes for Android phones and for the iPhone. You just have to uh, scan it and it's automatically going to take you to the app, the app store to download the application. You just have to, I can provide the code with the old application we had to scan in your medication but now there is a code we just have to enter and then it's easier to have it there and I'm more than happy to help you, you know, during lunch time to do it together. So sick day management, do you know your sick day rules? So how many of you are pretty clear or confident about what to do during just a flu or, or, or what to do before minor surgery or major dental surgery? So during illness or stress, in a healthy person, the body increases the cortisol output from the adrenal glands. So like, for example, me, I think my cortisol levels would be very, very high at the moment, <laughs> giving this presentation.
<laughs> but you know, like if I would be a person with adrenal insufficiency, I think I would have taken an extra dose to help me deal with it. So that's why it is very important to, uh, to increase the steroids, those to mimic the natural response by the body. Let's see, if you have cold, just a simple cold, no fever, so increase is not necessary. Fever less than 38 Celsius degree, a flu, minor infection, double your dose, and we would say that you know, double your dose for the duration of the fever. And just remember, if you are on that higher dose for three, four days, very important to return to the normal dose, nicely tapering off, not just going cold turkey, that you know, like next day I'm just going to take my normal dose. And also, if you're not getting better 48 hours, please go and go see your GP. So if you have a very high fever, like more than 39, we say triple your dose also for the duration of the fever and return to the standard dose in one, two days, just tapering it off nicely and also see your GP after 48 hours. You have a minor dental work, filling or scaling or polish or to see the dental hygienist, we would recommend to take an extra 10 milligram of hydrocortisone just an hour before seeing your doctor. And then if you feel, you know, like in pain or discomfort, then you can in the afternoon, you can take an extra dose, but most of the time it's not necessary. You have major dental work like root canal implant or tooth extractions, take an extra dose, 10 milligram, 60 minutes before the procedure and double dose for 24 hours. So if you are a keen runner like tomorrow, they have the marathon, half marathon, take five to 10 milligram hydrocortisone, 30, 60 minutes before activity and make sure that you know you keep hydrated. Major emotional, or mental stress, it can be like a major exam. Death of a close family member or relative, or one of my patients who was getting married, was very stressed, so he was you know, increasing his dose. So add 10 to 20 milligram hydrocortisone to the standard replacement dose. Shift working, that's very interesting because you know, like maybe there are some nurses, other people here who are working, you know, night shift or afternoon shift, morning shift, and they need to adjust a lot of their medication and it must be very hard. So adjust the cortisone tablet to during the awake times and for the duration of the shift and remedin. So I found it interesting. So people who are not eating, you know, after sun comes up until sundown, there are people who would not even take medication. So I think it's a little bit, is that what I heard? <laughs> so th then they can uh, switch to a long-acting glucocorticoid. Gastroenteritis with vomiting and diarrhea, so immediate hydrocortisone injection, and please right away seek medical help, call the ambulance. In New South Wales, we are very lucky because the ambulance is aware of the hydrocortisone injection. They are carrying on the truck now. They have a protocol. I heard from other nurses from other states like Victoria, they wouldn't give hydrocortisone even though the patient has a letter and then they have the hydrocortisone with them. It can be trauma, a broken bones, car accident, also immediate hydrocortisone injection and seek medical help, also severe injection. You have given the injection it is just going to help you to deal with the stress. It is not going to solve the underlying problem. So that's why give the injection and seek medical help, go to the nearest emergency room. So it is just a little figure I found on hydrocortisone emergency injection. So there is a green, it's A. It shows, you know, like first you are feeling unwell. The yellow area that, you know, like when you are uh, vomiting or diarrhea can happen or you cannot keep down the oral cortisol and the C, the red, the danger zone. I would give the injection, not down there in the red. I would just, uh, you know, before you hit C, I think that would be a good idea to get the injection, not to wait until you are very unwell. So emergency kit injection, this is what I give out when I do patient teaching. So I give you, you have the injection with you. I give you the alcohol box, syringes, the drawing up needles, the injection needle, and little gauze. Just very important because some people won't use the emergency because they don't need to use it for years. Just time to time, please check the expiry date on the injection because it can happen that by the time you when they get unwell and they need the injection, it has already expired. But 
I heard from one of an Edison's patient who is also a pharmacist that a dud injection is still better than giving nothing. The needles are all right. They are like, I always give fresh one, like good for like five years, but the injection, I think maybe it's two years, but I'm not pretty sure. It depends, you know, from the pharmacy, you know, what stock they have available because you can get something that is good for a year or, or two years, or maybe, you know, like other pharmacy has a better one or a newer stock in and it's good for four years. So always, always check or circle it. And then, you know, it's just right there, you see it, or just have a note somewhere, or, you know, like with a Sharpie, red color, write it on the injection, and then you will see it right away. You don't have to look for it. Because sometimes it's very hard to see, little letters, and if they are not good, not well, then you can't see. So, and this is just a step-by-step -step instructions, you know, how to give the injection. And I can give you this handout and we can go through it here as well. So it also says, you know, like wash your hand and check the expiry date. This sodium injection also called an <coughs> ectovial, so you have to activate it. So the injection has two chambers and separated by a rubber stopper. The bottom part has the medication, the powder in it, and the upper part has the diluent. And you can activate it like very, very firmly, pressing on the top of the medication. So then the rubber stuff are going to fall into the little chamber. And then you very slowly mix it. Don't shake it. Just upside down, you know, like turn it a couple of times or turn it around, but don't shake it because it's just going to be foaming. And you have to wait a lot of time, you know, a long time to be able to give it, all right? And after that, you just have to take off this little uh, plastic top, wipe it with an alcohol wipe, or if you forget, not a problem. We are going to get out the syringe with the drawing up needles. I always teach that push air with the syringe into the vial. So when, when you are turning it upside down, it's automatically the syringe will fill up with the medication just to make sure that, you know, like the needle is close to the, not in the bottom of the uh, 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 medication vial, so it has covered with the fluid, all right? Not just the air, because it can happen, you are nervous, you know, turn it upside down and the needle is up there, but the fluid is down here. So you are just aspirating air, not the medication change the needle for the giving needle and then how to give. So the simplest way, you know, like we give it to the side, just, you know, make a half line and spare then the middle outer, outer part, uh, part that you give it. And just don't be afraid, the needle is very sharp, just a little twist and then it goes in and just inject it. And take it out and just put a swab on it or a gauze or if you don't have just paper tissue, that's fine. And then, cool, yes, this is the and I was able to find the video as well. <laughs>
Remove the plastic tab covering the rubber stopper with your thumbnail. Wipe the top of the vial with the alcohol swab. Connect the 3ml syringe and the vial access cannula or drawing up needle together. Place the vial on a firm surface. Insert the vial access cannula or drawing up needle through the centre of the rubber stopper. With the access cannula or drawing up needle in the vial, invert the bottle and withdraw the correct dose. If using a drawing up needle, you must keep the needle tip underneath the fluid level in the bottle. Withdraw the syringe from the vial and change to the injection needle. The size of the injection needle will depend on the age of the person and you should discuss this with your clinic nurse. Flick the syringe to remove any air bubbles. Expel any excess air by pushing up on the plunger. Clean the skin surface of the thigh into which the injection will be given with the alcohol swab. Holding the syringe firmly, give the injection by quickly inserting the needle fully through the skin surface into the muscle layer. Push the plunger until the dose is fully injected. This will only take about 10 seconds. Remove the needle, do not recap and dispose of safely in a sharps container. Press over the site for a few seconds with the alcohol swab or cotton ball. This injection will work quite quickly and supervision is still required. Take the person to hospital for review as soon as possible. Please always follow the instructions provided by your doctor and consult your healthcare team for additional advice. Further information is also available in the Solucortef Hydrocortisone Consumer Medicine Information available at www.pfizer.com.au Okay, so the take home message is that it's very important to have medical or bracelet, New York uh, sick day rules and injection. Don't be afraid to give it or, you know, have the family member giving it to you. If you feel more comfortable, call ambulance. They're going to give it to you and take you to the hospital. So after the injection given, very important to look for medical help, go to GP or to the emergency room. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, could you just tell me how many milligrams is the full replacement dose of hydrocortisone? For a normal amount of cortisol? For the fluid? For a normal amount of cortisol. For the injection is 100 milligram. No, just if you're taking hydrocortisone as a yes. tablet yes. per day, yes. how many milligrams is oh, it? Okay, so it depends on your, 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 your treating physician. So the doctor is the one who prescribes it to you. Some people can have smaller dose and some people can be on higher dose. So yeah, it's total. I'm, I guess what I'm asking is if, if you don't produce any cortisol at all, then how many milligrams of hydrocortisone do you have to take? Um, um, so yeah. an average dose would be 20 milligrams in the morning and 4 milligrams in the afternoon. But it does vary yeah. and some people get away with a lot less. If you have a lot less than somewhere between 24 and 30 milligrams per day on divided doses, you do run the risk of more having an adrenal crisis when you're unwell. So there are patients who will swear they feel well on normal days and they might be on 12 milligrams a day. And I'm always telling them be on them really alert because we have shown, we've got data that these days when we use less amounts of steroids, we do run, we have higher rates of adrenal crises. And that's purely because they might be okay on days when they're not stressed and if suddenly something happens, then you've got to be onto it really quick. And in those patients who are on averagely lower doses, 
I might be telling people to triple rather than double doses or ordinarily. So it does depend. But on average, somewhere between 24 to 28 milligrams would be an average dose if you took someone to a three hours. Thank you. There's part two of that question then. Um, I know in Australia it seems more common to take hydrocortisone instead of dexamethasone, um, but I understand that dexamethasone is a longer lasting drug. So how do we determine which is better for a person and why in Australia do we sort of... It's not just Australia. Okay. But worldwide, most people would, for pituitary would use hydrocortisone. The reason is the diurnal rhythm that we showed you that is that we have our highest production of cortisol in the morning. That's normal. And so we don't want to have a steroid that's in our body at the same level throughout the day. And that's been associated with a lot of meta metabolic issues. So we do not want to use dexamethasone in general for pituitary replacement. And hydrocortisone is the best drug because it's short acting. You may need to give it more frequently over the day and manipulate the doses, but it's more physiological. Thanks. Thank you, Anne. Hi, sorry. I just wanted to know, do you think the injection will ever be turned into like an EpiPen? That would, I think that would be a great I idea. Yes, I haven't heard about it. You know, I just read some articles about it that, you know, like, yeah, but that would be great, much more easier. You shouldn't have to, you know, mix it, you know, just take it out and just give it to yourself. That would make sense, yeah, definitely. Easier administration. For, for something like jet lag, so if you're flying to the other side of the world, would the same rules for, like, shift work apply, or do you, how, how do you adjust the dose? I think it's like shift work because your circadian rhythm will change. Yeah. So I would recommend then, is that right then? How yeah, should I mean, you know it? It's a difficult one, out, yeah. 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 Just want to take extra. Yeah. Just take extra as a yeah. baseline. Yeah. Hi, I was interested in your circadian rhythm chart and I just wondered whether there was any research on how um, people with Cushing's or people in remission from Cushing's, um, whether there was any permanent alteration to their circadian rhythm. Because I'm thinking about not wanting to go to sleep late at night as a classic for me with having active Cushing's, but it seems to have kind of been maintained. And so I just wondered, was there any research on um, the permanence of a changed circadian rhythm that wasn't to do with shift work? Well, I, I haven't read any research regarding this. I don't know, one of the, Anne or Lydia? It's a, it's a good question. Yeah, it's a very good question. But, um, I don't know many obvious things, but theoretically, if your cortisol axis is working, if your cortisol axis is supposedly working normally, you should have that part of your circadian rhythm okay, but cortisol is not the only circadian hormone. There are numerous, numerous circadian hormones and all sorts of things. So it's not as simple as just the cortisol, I think.